Okay, so uh, what I am going to do now is uh, uh, try to discuss the proof of the monodromy theorem okay, of which we have seen a uh, couple of versions right and uh, so uh, I am of course going to prove the uh, version of the monodromy theorem the first version of the monodromy theorem okay. So, uh, so I begin with uh, so let me put the title as proof of the monodromy theorem. Uh, so this is version one. That's what I'm going to prove. So we begin with uh, uh, a lemma, okay? And what this lemma says is, it says the following thing. It says that, see, suppose you have a path along which you can do analytic continuation of a given function at the starting point of the path, okay? Then for all sufficiently nearby paths analytic continuations will exist for the same function okay and uh, and the fact is that uh, uh, the analytic continuation at the uh, uh, that you get at the end of the path uh, uh, will be one and the same okay so so here is the lemma uh, uh, if uh, f is analytic at z naught and can be analytically continued along a path gamma uh, uh, from z0 to z1 okay then there exists a delta greater than 0 such that uh, f can be analytically continued along any path meta uh, from z0 to z1 uh, such that uh, the distance between uh, gamma of t and eta of t is less than delta for every t in uh, a b moreover uh, the analytic continuation of f along uh, any such path nita uh, will lead to the same function at uh, 
z 1 as uh, the 1 gotten via comma ok. So, what this uh, what this lemma says is that you know so it, it says that if you have a path along which you can do an analytic continuation then you know sufficiently nearby paths starting at the same point and ending at the same point uh, also will admit analytic continuations and uh, these the result of all these analytic continuations are going to be one and the same ok. So, so the you know uh, 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 so, so if I draw a diagram it is something like this. So, here is a point z naught at which the function f is given and I have this path uh, gamma uh, which goes from z naught to z 1 gamma is a function from the closed interval a b on the real line to uh, the complex plane. So, it is a parameterized path um, and you know that f can be analytically continued along uh, gamma. So, which means that uh, uh, there is an analytic continuation which is given in terms of a power series it is given in terms of a one parameter family uh, of power series. So, so given uh, f t uh, of z is equal to sigma n equal to 0 to infinity uh, 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 so probably uh, ok uh, a n of t z minus gamma t to the power of n uh, with the mod z with this this power series converging uh, in a disc centered at gamma t radius r t where r t is the radius of convergence of this power series and uh, which is assumed positive and gamma t is the center of the power series ok. So, uh, with uh, f naught uh, that is f a is f ok. Uh, and what is the final function you get uh, 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 it is uh, so this corresponds to t equal to a and this corresponds to t equal to b ok and so this is just gamma a this is gamma b and somewhere in between you will get gamma t the point gamma t and at the point gamma t there is some there is a disc there is a disc centered at gamma t with uh, uh, with radius equal to radius of convergence r of t uh, and you know that uh, here well f t uh, the power series f t lives here ok it represents it converges here this is the disc of convergence the power series f t is a power series centered at gamma t. So, it is an expansion in terms of powers of in positive integral powers of z minus gamma t and a n of t are the corresponding coefficients ok. And when you put t equal to a you get gamma a and the corresponding power series is f a which is the function analytic function f you started with and it after the at the uh, at the end of the path you will get a new function here and that new function is uh, 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 f b it is a it is a analytic function corresponding to the uh, uh, analytic function with power series f b ok that corresponds for uh, that corresponds to t equal to b ok. And now uh, what this lemma says is that you can find a delta such that you know if you take any other path nita which also is from a from the same closed interval a b to c and it also is from z naught to z 1. So, you know the neta should look something like this. So, your neta is like this ok. So, neta is also defined from uh, the uh, closed interval a b on the real line uh, and the point about the what is the connection between neta and uh, uh, gamma for every t the dif distance between the point neta t and gamma t is less than delta this distance between gamma t and neta t has to be less than delta 
this distance has to be less than delta which means you are you know you are actually looking at uh, 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 paths uh, yeah, yeah this this so so you know it is like uh, you can call this uh, a delta neighborhood of the path gamma okay. So you know uh, if one um, so you know if you draw a diagram let me let me redraw it here so here is my gamma okay and you know at every point if you give me a point then you know I take this disc uh, with radius delta so this is my open disc with radius delta here and you know if I take it here I will get another open disc with radius delta you know and throughout it will be like this that is a that is a fixed radius delta and here also even at including the end points. So you know of course you know because of uh, the uh, because of the compactness uh, of uh, the path uh, finitely many discs are enough to cover the path of course and uh, the point is that you uh, what the lemma says is that you know if along this path gamma you can analytically continue f then for any other path which starts from uh, z0 and ends at z1 which is lying in this union of all these discs okay. Uh, if you have any other path like this nearby path okay so this is gamma and any other nearby path meta such that at each point the uh, uh, at each point t the distance between the corresponding point on meta which is meta t and the corresponding point on gamma which is gamma t is less than delta okay suppose you take a path like that then the lemma says that on that path also the analytic continuation of f is possible and not only that it says that the analytic continuation of f will lead uh, along that path also if you do the analytic continuation you will end up with the same function as you uh, got in the case of gamma namely fb okay. So what this tells is it says it gives you existence and uniqueness of the analytic continuation along nearby paths okay. So you can refer to this lemma compactly as existence and uniqueness of analytic continuations along nearby paths okay and how nearby that nearby is given by this delta which uh, whose existence we have to show that is the that is part of the proof. So what we do is uh, proof is pretty easy okay so so you know we just use the we just use the following fact that uh, uh, you know uh, see we have already seen that uh, uh, we have already seen seen that that uh, uh, the functions uh, a n and r a n from close interval a b uh, to c and r from the close interval a b to r are greater than 0 are uh, uh, are continuous i have already proved this to you i have already proved that you know if you write up if you write a analytic continuation like this an analytic continuation along a path in terms of power series then the uh, uh, the coefficients of the power series they are continuous functions of t so each a n is a continuous function of t and the radius of convergence of the power series is also a continuous function of t so this is something that I have proved okay I am going to use I am going to use that so uh, well uh, so uh, the thus if you take r of uh, this closed interval a b what you will get is some delta comma capital delta okay see mind you r is a continuous function okay it is a continuous function so uh, uh, you know a continuous function take maps a connected set to a connected set it maps a compact set to a compact set therefore you see this closed interval a b uh, is going to be mapped to a connected set on the real line so it is going to be a real interval 
and it is also going to be mapped to a compact set. So, you are going to get a an interval on the real line which is connected and compact ok. So, it has to be closed closure well, ok and uh, of course uh, uh, every value that r takes is positive therefore, this delta is positive. So, you know in other words delta is the minimum of all the radii of convergence uh, of all these power series this small delta little delta is the minimum of all these rt's. So, delta is equal to minimum uh, t belonging to a b of r t you can also write this as infimum uh, of t belonging to a b r t and of course you know uh, infimum and minimum will be one and the same because in this case uh, uh, your your variable is uh, or is defined on a uh, compact set and a compact set always contains its boundary. So, uh, fine so this so this is the delta that I want ok I claim this is the delta that we need to prove the lemma ok. So, now so now the question is if for this delta what I have to show is suppose I give you another path nita satisfying this condition that the corresponding distance between for each t between nita t and gamma t is less than delta I have to show that on that path nita also I can define an analytic continuation and I have to show that that analytic continuation will also lead to the same function as f t uh, as f b when uh, you reach the point z 1 for the parameter value t equal to b ok. So, uh, how does one prove it is very very easy given a path nita from a b to c with uh, distance between nita t and gamma t less than delta for all t and with nita of a is gamma of a is z 1 z naught nita of b is equal to gamma of b is equal to z 1 we define g t so I am going to define an analytic continuation. So, it is very very simple see so let me draw one more diagram no harm in drawing a lot of diagrams. So, here is z naught this is z 1 this is some t and, and this is the path gamma. So, this point is gamma t I have a nearby path which is nita and the corresponding point on it is nita t and the the uh, the assumption is that with respect to gamma t I mean with respect to gamma of t you draw a circle centered at gamma t radius delta then this circle contains uh, nita t. So, the distance between nita t and gamma t is less than delta that is the assumption. So, what you do it is very simple what you do is you just define g t of z to be equal to sigma to be equal to the power series expansion of f t centered at nita t. So, see I want you to understand see this gamma if you take the point gamma t then uh, I am having uh, you know the the uh, at gamma t I have the power series expansion for uh, uh, I have the power series expansion uh, uh, of f t. So, f t is already a power series uh, it is expanded at gamma t it is expanded at this point and it has got radius of convergence r t ok. And you know this r t is uh, this r t is always greater than delta. So, you know if I take this point gamma t and if I draw this circle with uh, uh, if I draw the disc of convergence uh, for f t I will get a bigger disc I will get a bigger disc. centered at gamma t ok if I consider the function f t the power series f t it will represent an analytic uh, function the power series will represent an analytic function uh, whose Taylor series will be this power series itself and that analyt and that uh, and where is it valid it is valid in the disk of convergence and the disk of convergence is at this is said is, 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 is a disk centered at gamma t ok and the radius equal to r of t. 
but you know this rt is greater than delta because delta is, uh, is the minimum of all the rts and now what you must understand is that this bigger disc that I have drawn that is where ft lives. the analytic function ft lives in that bigger disc okay uh, since the analytic function ft lives in the bigger disc and this neta t is inside that bigger disc I can write the power series of this ft at neta t okay I can do this. So, what it will what it will give me is I will get some power I will get some coefficient sigma n equal to 0 to infinity some b n of t uh, z minus neta t to the power of n this is what I will get. So, this is I am just writing the power series expansion of the function f t at this point. So, it is an expansion in terms of integral positive integral powers of z minus neta t okay. Now, my claim is that if you define like this my claim is that this g t is an analytic continuation along the path neta. So, so the claim is g t is an analytic continuation along of uh, of uh, I mean analytic continuation along along the path theta and uh, why is why is that true see what is the condition for our uh, uh, what is the condition for uh, 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 an expression like this to give rise to a uh, analytic continuation. So, the first condition is that for each t the uh, you must get a power series with positive radius of convergence that is the first condition and the second condition for uh, for nearby t's the functions that are given by the power series they should be one and the same analytic function ok. So, you see now for each t it is very clear that this function has a uh, this, this power series has a positive radius of convergence because what is the radius of convergence of this the radius of convergence of this is at least uh, this distance from neta t to the end of this disc okay because that is where the uh, 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 ft lives okay. So, what you must understand is the so let me write this the radius of convergence is you know uh, so I should say uh, at least uh, it is at least this distance uh, r t minus the distance between gamma neta t and gamma t it is at least this much ok. So, you know if I draw this line like this this whole length is going to be r t all right and this distance, this length is the distance between gamma t and eta t and at least this much should be the uh, you know uh, uh, at least here this power series will live because this is the power series of ft so the so the power series of ft will at least this power series will have at least radius of convergence this much which is the distance which is the difference of rt and this distance between eta t and gamma t okay and and that is th and that is positive. So, for each t the uh, radius of convergence is positive ok that is the first condition. So, for each t I am really giving you a proper uh, a power series. So, I should not give you a power series with 0 radius of convergence that is not allowed ok. So, for each t I should first ensure that I get a power series with positive radius of convergence that is that is the first condition. Second condition is for nearby t is the power series should represent the same analytic function that is what that is the second condition for an expression like this to uh, give to define an analytic continuation. So, how does one see that it is very very simple see uh, so uh, uh, we have so let me write this fact we have uh, uh, so it is it is a uh, I, I think uh, 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 so, this is the radius of convergence of uh, g t. So, so, let me write this r sub g t uh, of t is positive for all t. So, this is the radius of convergence of g t this radius of convergence 
okay. Uh, so that is the first condition, second condition is uh, so you know let me again draw another little diagram so it is like this so here is my uh, gamma here is my neta this is z0 this is z1 so you know uh, well so I have this point uh, gamma t and I have this point neta t and of course I have taken a disc centered at gamma t radius delta uh, so this is how I have chosen my neta okay. Uh, now you see if if you take t prime close to t okay of course neta t prime will be close to neta t and gamma t prime will go be go to ga will be close to gamma t and that is just because of continuity. So you know if you take a t prime very close to uh, either on the left or on the right let me take it on the right so this is gamma t prime which is uh, for t prime close to t and, and here is neta t prime for t prime close to t okay. So you see if if t prime is close to t we need to check uh, that uh, uh, ft as that is gt is equal to gt prime as analytic functions you have to check this okay. So one of the conditions of the analytic continuation is that it is given by power series but the, the power series are all uh, expansions of analytic functions at different points okay, okay the points are varying along the path but the point but the condition is if you go to nearby points then the power series will be different but they should give you the same analytic function okay. The power series will of course be different because you have changed the centre of the power series okay. So, what I will have to check is that this gt for t prime close to t the analytic function defined by the power series gt and the analytic function defined by the power series gt prime are one and the same I have to check that only then this will this be truly an analytic continuation and that is very easy because you see if you check carefully you see uh, uh, so uh, it is just a matter of uh, 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 so you know what will happen you will see that gt so you know uh, gt prime of uh, uh, z if you calculate this this will be ft prime of z okay as an analytic function because that is how I have defined it because gt prime is defined to be the power series of ft prime. So it will be equal to the analytic function ft prime that is how I have defined it here gt is a power series of ft therefore the function represented by gt is just ft okay. So gt prime of z is ft prime of z but you know f is an analytic continuation so for t prime uh, close to t this will be the same as the analytic function ft of z so this step is because f is uh, ft is an analytic continuation. this is because ft is an analytic continuation and t prime is close to t okay but then ft of z as an analytic function is the same as gt of z because that is how gt is defined gt is defined to be the power series of ft centered at neta t so so that th therefore so this implies that a gt prime gt is indeed an analytic continuation an analytic continuation continuation of uh, g a to g b okay okay so you have proved, proved existence of an analytic continuation along the path neta along any path neta which is in a delta neighborhood of the path gamma okay. Now what is g a but you see what is g a g a is f f a because g t is after all the power series expansion of f t okay so ga is just fa and you see 
uh, but GA is FA and GB is also equal to FB by definition. So, the analytic continuation of FA so there is an analytic continuation along the path theta of F equal to FA and leading to FB okay. Now use the fact that if you give me a parameterized path okay then the analytic continuation is unique if you fix the starting function. So, because along because I have proved that along the path theta there is one analytic continuation which starts with F A and ends with F B uniqueness will tell me any analytic continuation along the path theta which starts with F A will always end with F B. So, I will get the same analytic continuation okay. So, uh, so any so you know here I am using this fact that you know if you have a path and you give me uh, if you have a path on which you 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 have parameterized the path and along that path if you have an analytic continuation of a starting function then that is unique the analytic continuation is unique you cannot uh, you cannot get different analytic continuations in fact analytic continuation along each point is uniquely determined for every point uh, uh, other than the starting point okay so it is uniqueness of the analytic continuation along a fixed parametric path that is uh, that i'm using okay so so, any analytic continuation, continuation of F A along theta leads to F B. So that that finishes the proof of this lemma. Okay. It's a it's a it's a pretty simple lemma. Uh, nothing complicated about it, but the power of this lemma is that it tells you that if you have analytic continuation along a path, then along nearby paths also analytic continuations will exist, and they will be the same. They will give rise to the same analytic continuation. Okay, and of course, I should again let me again uh, repeat at the risk of being uh, overtly repetitive that we always keep using this fact that uh, if you give me a parameterized path and if you give me a starting function that is an analytic function of the starting point then there is only one analytic continuation of that function along that path this is essentially because of the identity theorem okay. So, uh, that is something that we keep using alright. So, this is so, so this is the lemma that says that uh, sufficiently close paths along which you have an analytic con continuation will also lead we also have analytic continuations but you will get the same result okay. Now, I am going to use this and prove uh, uh, or, or use these ideas and prove uh, the uh, uh, first version of the monotomy theorem. So, so let us so let me write it down. So, <coughs> given so, uh, so re let me uh, let me draw the diagram. Uh, so, you know, you are given uh, points Z0 and Z1. Of course, uh, the way I am drawing it, Z0 and Z1 seem to be distinct points, but there is no there is no restriction, they could be one and the same point, okay. So, it includes that case also, okay. So, Z0 and Z1 are two points, okay, and you have uh, two paths there is a path gamma uh, from uh, z0 to z1 and another path neta uh, from uh, z0 to z1 which are homotopic so there is a homotopy from gamma to neta okay <coughs> so there is a homotopy from gamma to neta by intermediate paths which means i can continuously deform the path gamma to the path neta. So, I have this of course, <coughs> because the complex plane is simply connected uh, uh, any path like this can be deformed to a path like that okay. And how do we write this homotopy? Uh, so, uh, we are so given a homotopy of paths. So, I am drawing the diagram the other way maybe I should have drawn it to the 
right side but anyway it does not matter. So let me do it like this, so you know you have uh, you have this you have this real line uh, I mean you have the real plane the R2 and uh, I have the T parameter and I have here the uh, S parameter and this is the unit square. and I have a I have a continuous function f from here to here okay and what this continuous function does is <coughs> so this continuous function is written as f of s comma t okay and what it does is that if you freeze an s if you freeze s then it give ri gives rise to the path gamma s so f of s comma t is gamma s of t. <coughs> So, uh, for fixed S, uh, of course, I have put, uh, I have, you know, uh, of course, we can use uh, uh, instead of unit using the unit square, you could have used A, B, C, D. You could have used a product of uh, two in two closed intervals, but I'm not doing that. Uh, uh, or, or perhaps uh, I could even do that. I mean, it's all right. Our gammas are all our paths are all defined on AB so let me also use that so let me do this uh, maybe I can take some A here and a B there and uh, my homotopy could be defined on CD could be like this I mean the argument is going to be no different so I can uh, as well have it like this so I will get this so rather I will get this rectangle uh, which is given by AB cross CD. So T lies from A to B and uh, S lies from C to D. Uh, so this should have, this should be C. Okay. So the picture could have been like this. <coughs> so so what's happening is that gamma S is for every S in for every S if you give me a certain S value which lies from C to D. I have this gamma s which is defined from a b to the complex plane giving so you know if I fix a value of s from c to d and if I take the corresp and if I let t to vary from a to b I am getting going to get this line okay and the and as I move as t moves along this line this uh, this is going to trace the curve gamma s okay gamma is a is a path all right and when t equal to uh, you know when s equal to 0 i have gamma when s is equal to d i mean sorry when s is equal to c i have gamma and when s is equal to d i have neta so you know so all these all these intermediate paths they all started time t equal to 0 so this is time t equal to 0 this is sorry not t equal to 0 t is equal to a <coughs> uh, and this is time t equal to b okay you think of it as a time parameter and you think of the interval a b as time it is uh, it is time as a parameter as you are moving along the path okay. So uh, so what is happening here is uh, all these paths gamma s of uh, a is always z0 gamma s of b is always z1. So this is what is called fixed endpoint homotopy, homotopy that is all the paths involved they start at the same point and end at the same point okay and gamma uh, a gamma c is uh, gamma gamma d is neta okay so this gamma is gamma sub c this neta is gamma sub d and you have in the intermediate for for intermediate values of s for between c and d you get the various intermediate uh, uh, paths so actually what is happening is that you know you are having you can think of all these lines you can think of various lines like this and the images of all these lines are going to give rise to this so the image of this whole square i mean this whole rectangle is this it is just a deformation of this 
with except that you have collapsed this whole end to the point is it not and you have collapsed that end to the point z1 okay. So you know if I take this thing and collapse it I will get something like this okay this capital F is just a continuous function. Now uh, so this is a this is so uh, monodromy theorem says that you are given paths uh, gamma and neta uh, which are homotopic and what else are you given you are given an, an analytic function here which can be continued along gamma and not only along gamma it can be continued along each of these paths okay I am I am given a starting analytic function at this point f which I can analytically continue along any of these paths that is given to me and the, the question that the monodromy theorem, theorem answers is about what is the function you will get at this end when you go along different paths the monodromy theorem says you will get the same function you will not get a different function you could expect that if you go along gamma you got one function but maybe if you go along neta you may get another function and if you go along some intermediate path you may get yet another function okay. So you would expect that if I start with f <coughs> and analytically continue along gamma s I will end up with a function f s and you would expect that f s could change but the monodromy theorem says no it says that will not happen it says always you will get back the same f b which is one and the same function uh, that you would get by analytically continuing f along any of these okay. So the monodromy theorem says that if you have a homotopy like this <coughs> and there is no obstruction that means a given analytic function at the starting point can be analytically continued along all these paths then the function you get at the end along any of these paths is they are all one and the same you are going to get only one analytic function right. So that is what we are going to prove so uh, so let me write that down if the analytic function f and z0 can be analytically continued continued along any comma s then uh, the the result of any such analytic continuation would uh, be the same analytic function at z1 so this is the monotropic theorem if you if at the starting point z0 I am given an analytic function and suppose I can analytically continue it along any of these intermediate paths intermediate paths of course it also includes the starting path gamma and the ending path neta okay then no matter along which path you continue analytically the final function that you will get at the other end point at the terminal point z1 it will be the same that is what the monotromy theorem says. So if you want to state it in uh, compact language monotromy theorem says well analytic continuation of an of, uh, of an analytic function along uh, homotopic paths will lead to the same function if paths are homotopic then analytic continue the result of analytic continuation of a given function will be the same that is what it says okay. But of course the technical point is that you must make sure that the analytic continuation is possible along every path in the homotopy that is a that should not be some uh, that should not be some hole here that should not be uh, uh, for example it should not be the it cannot be like this you know that uh, uh, for example the origin is here and here you are starting with the branch of the logarithm and certainly a path which crosses the origin that is a path along which the branch uh, any branch of the logarithm cannot be continued analytically. So such a thing should not happen there should not be a point in this leaf like region that I have drawn there should never be a point where there is obstruction to analytic continuation 
there should not be a point where I cannot continue certain the, the function that I am worried about okay. that should not be there so there should be no obstruction to analytic continuation. So uh, well uh, let me say a few words about how we are going to prove it the method is very very simple what we are going to prove is that we already seen this lemma that you know you can find a, a certain delta uh, 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 rather uh, we have seen this lemma which says that nearby paths have give rise to the same analytic continuation okay. So we are what we are going to do is we are going to show that you know you can uh, and how uh, and the nearby there was given by a delta so we are also going to find a delta here okay it is a different delta okay but that delta will give you uh, uh, you know distances so that will break up these homotopies into you know strips like this and along each strip the analytic continuations are going to be the same okay. So uh, by breaking this uh, whole thing just like I have done in this diagram into finitely many strips of thickness delta okay and by using the fact that along each of these uh, uh, successive pairs of uh, paths the analytic continuation along the top path is the same as the analytic continuation along the bottom path and then you do this finitely many times you will get that the analytic function continuation along the first path will be the same as the analytic continuation along the second path and then the analytic continuation along the second path will be the same as the analytic continuation along the third path and then you go by induction and finally you end up seeing the analytic the analytic continuation uh, they will all be equal to the analytic continuation along the last path okay. So this is the idea of the proof so the idea of the proof is to be able to uh, exactly draw a diagram uh, I mean diagrammatically to get something like this breaking the leaf into smaller leaves of thickness delta okay that is the idea of the proof. So the idea of the proof is pretty easy so I will explain that in the next lecture.